see, today, let's talk about this hobby. How did you get interested in carving, well, I Mr. Know. Fram? I don't know. Then I got the uh, idea out of a popular mechanic. Oh, okay. For deer and little animals of various yeah. kinds, huh? Mm -hmm. They're so graceful. Yeah, they are. You've got a nice touch to those. They kind of remind me of some of the African carving you see once in a while, you know, mm -hmm. the uh, Negroes of Southern Africa carve. Well, they use real dark wood. You used uh, good old pine here, huh? No, cottonwood. Is that cottonwood? Yeah. Oh. I'll bet you've given a lot of them away, too. Given them quite a few away, yes. yeah. Have a look at that buck. Yeah. He's a three-point. He's a good old three-point. You did a nice job on him. Just a jackknife and a little sandpaper, huh? Mm-hmm. Did you saw a little bit here to get the oh, yeah, some see. of that wood out there between yeah. the legs? And, yeah. Cottonwood. Did you ever paint then? Did you ever do any painting or? No. Like that? That's a painting there, somebody. Yeah, no. Uh, Cousin of mine done that. She took there in Los Angeles with that picture. In a big uh, exhibition. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Where was that home of yours? Down here in Princeton or somewhere? Yeah, just out of Princeton ways. Uh huh. Which road? The Merritt Road. The Merritt Road, okay. Is anybody living on the property now? Supposed to be. Yeah? I wonder if that's back in there around the hill now. Is that. Was that once an old schoolhouse too? Yes. Is I sure, yeah, I know where that is. That's on the old road. The, yeah. the, the highways cut it off, you yeah. know. Right below uh Muncie's. Muncie's, yeah. 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 I know I've been in that house. Uh a girl and I were doing some leather working there. Oh I was they had four H. Yeah. Four H were met in there and uh it was a Sinclair girl and we were doing some leather working. And I was teaching the kids a little leather working because I like to I like to work with leather. Now it should have been around when my wife was running it. I'll bet you she was the one. Yeah, yeah. She called me up one day and said, "Come on over and uh, bring your leather working stuff and see if we can show the kids some stuff." She did leather work too, didn't oh, she? Oh yeah. Yeah, she was good at it. You got something in there that she made? Yeah. I see it, this wallet, right? Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Yeah, she did a good job. Yeah, she was very particular. Henry Frem. Yeah. yeah. HF, that's good. I don't think I got my belt on. I made a belt one time, and I went over to Europe, and the guy wanted to buy it from me. <laughs> It had a western buckle on it. And yeah. it. She made that belt there too, huh? No, well, uh, Eddie Ferguson made this one. Oh. You know it, I sure do, yeah. She used to uh, decorate my son's birthday cakes every every year. Mm hmm Yeah. I knew her son too, uh, Evan. Uh, Evan yeah. Ferguson, yeah. Well, that is a coincidence. You know, I looked at that. It's still yellow. The building is still painted yellow out there. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that something to look at that? Yeah. Did you make that picture frame for your... No. No, she had that all uh, made up down in LA. And her name is Lynn or Lead? Mona Lead. Lead, Mona Lead, yeah. I can believe that would take a third place. Yes. And that's from all of the uh, West Coast, I imagine. Everybody was entering. Yeah. yeah. Did she make that one too? She made that one too, yeah. Yeah, Russian thistle. Yeah. Right. What's this award for?
Oh, you were a first aid man. Yeah. Oh boy, let's read this. Can I take this over? Yeah. I'll bring it. Back. There's a story to that. That's a St. John's Award, isn't it? For yes. Successfully controlling hemorrhage in a young man who had su suffered a punctured artery in a skating accident in Vancouver, British Columbia, 2nd of December, 1962, until medical attention was available. How did you do that, Henry? How did you stop the bleeding for that boy? Yeah. Put your weight on that on. You put your weight on it? Oh, yes. Was it in his leg? In his uh, right in here. Oh, in the groin, huh? In the groin, yeah. That's a big one, too. It's yeah, a big artery. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the blood was squirting up to the ceiling almost. And what'd you do, stand on it or uh, lean on it? No, or? I got my two fists. Yeah. And uh, I had a stand behind me to say I push down. So he added his weight, too? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they phoned a the, uh, fire the ambulance. And the fire, that's the message first, and they came over. Uh -huh. And the good thing they did was uh, chap was just about done for it. He wanted no breathing air. Uh -huh. He was in shock, too, huh? Yeah. How old was he? He was about 15. Playing hockey? No, just skating around. Huh. That's something to be very proud of. I'd hang that yeah. on my wall, too, Henry, yeah. if I had an award for doing that. Certificate. Well, you know, I went to Ottawa one time, and I went into St. John's office, the head office, mm -hmm. and I introduced myself, and the fellow says, uh, come on with me, he said, I'll show you, the, take you around and show you. Mm -hmm. And one place we went in, there was a girl in there, and uh, she got out all my, every time they had a duty to take care of, to take care of her, and put it down. But she had a stack of my about she had high. Mm-hmm. That's very nice to get an award like that, Henry. Yeah. yeah. My son's got one, too. Oh, he saved somebody, too? Yeah. Oh, how'd he do that? At, uh, at the uh, Air Force Cadets. Uh-huh. In town here? In Vancouver. Oh, yeah. And. Uh, he was hanging something up on the wall, this kid was, and uh, he slapped on her with a hook. And he went in and just tore him right open. And called for Wade, and the boy went right, right there, and they uh, let the officer, and uh, he, uh, Went to the uh, get to what it was the office or to the hospital. But anyway, when they got there, they were all the way on the drunk. <laughs> all the doctors and everybody. Yeah. So what did Wade have to do then? Well, he just stayed with him. He, he got help. Somebody showed up. Yeah. He was bleeding too, huh? Oh, yes. And so he had to do the same thing you yeah. did? Press on it, huh? Just take pressure on it. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. many sons did you say you had? Two. And one daughter? No daughters. No, no daughters? Oh, two sons. Two sons. Yeah. And uh, in case I get hold the limb up. Oh, oh yeah. 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 So gravity will help a little bit, huh? Yeah. 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 The uh, instructor that we took uh, lessons from. He says, water won't run uphill. Yeah, right. But it will squirt uphill. Yeah. <laughs> if it's a big artery, it'll squirt uphill, yeah. 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 But it all helps if you hold your hand up. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have any accidents on the ranch out there at the Frem 
prim place out there in the woods? Um, nothing serious. Nothing serious, huh? No. No axes or anything like that? No. Yeah. Well, I'll hang this back up on the wall for you. Yeah. No, but the only accident I had was riding horses and so I bucked off. <laughs> now, how many times did you get bucked off? <laughs> yeah? Quite a few. <laughs> I guess if you live on them, you started at a ripe tender age there, that oh, picture. Yes. This picture here shows you. Yeah. Yeah. You remember the horse's name? Old Nig. That was Nig, huh? Yeah. What was your dad's name? Fred. Fred, yeah. You must have been about six years old there, huh? About that. Seven, about six, that. six or seven years old. Boy, you sit in the saddle real well. Yeah. You like to ride, huh? Oh, my dad. It's one thing I miss. Still miss it, yeah. yeah. Did you keep many saddle horses out there uh, no, at a time? Just one. one yeah, saddle yeah. Horse and team to work with. Yeah. yeah. Was your dad a good rider too? Not, not too good, no. Yeah. I can see where you got your nose. Yeah. Your dad has your same nose there, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. That's kind of an eagle's nose, isn't it? Would you call it an eagle nose? I don't know. I don't think my nose is anything like that nowadays. I had brushes several times. You didn't get any, any fights, did you? No, I got no fight with the baseball one time. <laughs> oh, ball to come back. Yeah? Took me right in the nose. Were you catching? Were yeah. you the catcher? Yeah. Yeah? We didn't have, it was at school, we didn't have any masks. Yeah, yeah. Again. Just ticked it enough to lift it over your glove. Yeah. So it went over the glove and smacked you. I'll bet your eyes watered for a while. <laughs> you can remember it pretty well, huh? Funny thing to the teacher, yeah. This came in the front door with a bucket of water. Yeah. This was just happening and he threw that whole bucket of water on me. <laughs> to wake you up? Yeah. <laughs> it cold conked you, huh? You were out. No. No? No. You just threw it on you anyway? Yeah. Your nose was bleeding pretty bad, I'll bet. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what I did one time. Uh, this, ki this kid said, look out, and I turned around to look and a snowball split right on my nose and one half <laughs> in each eye. I had two shiners. <laughs> it split right on my nose and went one on each side of my eye, you know. Yes? Well, that picture was taken about Oh, 86 years ago. 86? I got an idea. Can I take a picture of it? Of that? Sure, I'll take a picture of the picture. Yes. Okay, I'll turn this off for a minute. Good better not do it. Do it for yesterday. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Let's see. That's your wife? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was her name? Bitter. Mm -hmm. She looks like a friendly, happy sort. Mm -hmm. Cheerful sort. Yeah, so how long were you married? 42 years. That's a record to be proud of, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not many ma people make it that long no. nowadays. No. no. Yeah. And you had two boys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And are these some of your grandkids here? No, I have no grandchildren. Oh. Then my uh, 
I think I know that kid. What's his name? That's a girl. Oh. That's uh, Iris Ross. And there's Brenda Ford. Mm -hmm. Two sisters. Okay. Yeah. No, they uh, both work for us from there on the place up here. Mm -hmm. The housework and all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, what was, i got to ask you a question. What was the worst thing you did in school? See, I was a teacher, so I can ask you that question. Well, what was the worst thing you did in school? Didn't have a fight. You did? Huh. <laughs> it was three who didn't. Rolling around in the mud? Yeah. Yeah. And what was the best thing you ever did in school? Okay. Were you on the honor roll? Yeah. I bet you were, yeah. Which one? The high honor roll? Or first class or second class? Or? I started in at the bottom and came through. You did? All the way through? Huh. What was your favorite subject? Arithmetic, I think, and geography. And you turned out to be a carpenter? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. Of course, being good at arithmetic, that helps in, in carpentry. Yeah. You only have to cut the boards once then. Mm -hmm. You don't have to keep coming back to the lumber pile to get more <laughs> boards because that one was too short. <laughs> yeah. So I, I work under a, a good foreman. And, uh, he, uh, he was very good. Yeah, we ran into the house one time. We just hadn't built it. And the forms hadn't been pulled up yet. So we pulled the forms up and took the measurements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we did. Uh, three of us were garments. Four of us, and uh, the other crew right next to us had their up, had their walls up, and, and we finished their finished ours and moved over and finished theirs. <laughs> that made him embarrassed, huh? Mm -hmm. How long a day did you work as a carpenter? Ten eight hours? Eight, eight hours. Eight hours. Huh? Yeah. Bring your own tools, or did they supply them? No, he had but you know, yeah, but you don't Yeah. Well, you kept them sharp too, huh? Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. There's a real knack to sharpening tools, you know. Oh yes. Not everybody can sharpen a tool from no. the way, yeah. No. Oh, I love to pick up a good sharp chisel or a good sharp plane. They're a joy yeah. to work with. Yeah. Then you get the other ones and a plane leaves the ruts, you know, where they're nicked. Leaves those little grooves through the wood, you know. <laughs> Ridges along in the wood, yeah. Did you ever enter any of these in the fall fair, by any chance, your wood no. garbage? I think you should. Yeah, I was thinking about it too. I think it would be real good. The trouble of it is. There's been many kids in this since I'm not getting to grab it. Yeah, and they just walk away with it. Yeah. How long did it take you to carve one of these? Quite a few, what, a couple hours? Oh, yes. At least, huh? Yeah. In fact, I spent putting it all winter on the bunch. On the bunch of them? Yeah, well, I made every day and out of those two. You got the proportions just right. You could see these in your fields, I'll bet you, when you were growing up, huh? Oh, God. One time, my wife and I were just finished supper. And we were sitting in the, you see, out of the field, out into the field from the house. Uh huh. And there was 32 deer in the field. At once? Yeah. 
That, they say that when we, when you first came when uh, I first came here, 1969, a guy just prior to that could go out and pick the deer he wanted. You didn't just look for a deer. You you chose the buck you wanted. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to take just any old buck. You could pick out what you wanted. Those days are gone. Yeah, well, I've shot many deer, but I've only shot them for what we had to have the meat. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Not for sport. No. Yeah. No, I couldn't see no sport in it. Such beautiful animals, aren't they? Killed about 15, 20 bears. But yeah, everybody came along and he killed a cow of mine. And the rest of the bears come in and get a taste of it, they tackle anything. They wanted to call me. So we could tear a boar on from a bunch of seals. Black bears. The grizzly brown. killed the brown ones too. Yeah. yeah. The grizzly killed uh, the first one. Yeah. And he started the whole thing. Then. Yeah. The others, they're scavengers. They wouldn't sit around when a grizzly was there. I'll bet. No. <laughs> if the grizzly was eating on that cow, they stayed yeah, back. They stayed right yeah. Yeah. I've never seen a grizzly in the woods. No. Never have. No. I have. I saw tracks. And it made the hair on the back of my neck stand right up. Those tracks were up on uh, Deer Mountain, near Lodestone Mountain, you know, up in the top where the coal mine was, Blakeburn. And uh, those tracks, I would say, were a good six inches across and maybe seven inches long, eight inches long. Yeah. The hind feet, you know. Mm -hmm. Boy. Where did you see your silver tips? Right up on the, on the ranch there? In Kelly Creek. Kelly Creek, yeah. Ever see more than one in a group? No. Always singles, huh? Yeah, always singles. Huh? And you na had no inclination to shoot them? I did shoot one. You did shoot a grizzly? Yeah. Oh. Huh? How, did you, how did you happen to do that? Did you want it for the meat, or did you have to shoot it well, for protect your animals? Or? No. The sake of shooting the grizzly. Oh. Then what'd you do with it? We took part of it home for I was kind of a cook in the camp for this. We cooked it up as it was good. It was it wasn't much good no. No. You saved the rug, that hair? No. Uh, did you save the hide? No. Uh -huh. Was it a big one? No. Oh, for, uh, oh. A two-year-old. A two-year-old, yeah. Hmm. yeah. No, I, that's the closest I came to, to a grizzly was seeing his tracks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What year do you suppose it was when you got your grizzly? Roughly. Oh, about 22. 1922. 1922. Mm -hmm. Willis has had to shoot one out here. Yeah. Abe Willis, uh, three or four years ago, he got in hot water <laughs> over it too. <laughs> but it was messing around his cattle, so he popped it off, and he and he should have got a permit first, mm -hmm. but he thought, well, I'll just pop it off, and then the game warden got him. So. Well. I was out hunting one evening after supper. I went up and took the horse and went up on the hill and sat down and down to our neighbors. And I crossed the river track when I crossed the river track there was a campfire. Mm -hmm. And then I went up there and gave one. And he showed how it was. Was it Alan Gill? No. Oh, the one before him. Yeah, and uh, yeah. No, he had stopped. He took you in out of my scabbard. But I put it back in the scabbard again. I said, I'll show you two, Daddy. 
ist der Erlöse. Ja, ja. Mein Junge, Brüdend. Ich nur will ja da schon mehr. Ja. What was it, a 3030? Yeah. Yeah. Winchester? Savage. A savage 3030. Yeah, that would be terrible to lose out, wouldn't it? Yeah. That's a lot of, what, what would one of those cost in those days? You know, brand new, savage. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was a couple months wages, huh? Yeah. Yeah. He could tell it had been fired, huh? Oh, yes. Yeah. Could smell a cordite. Could smell of gunpowder. Yeah. Really? If you're going back in the scavenger, you should yeah. say, What are you doing tomorrow? I don't know. You'd be ready, he says, at 5 or 6 o'clock, he said, Now, come down and we go out. And shoot a bear. Yeah. You didn't get me, though. Yeah. You don't remember his name, do you, by any chance? That name doesn't ring any bell. The only one I knew was Alan Gill. And then now we've got Fred Reyes here. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about eliminating the game warden here. Yeah. You heard about that? Yeah. Isn't that stupid? Our government is going crazy when it does things like that. Yeah. You know, that's, that is stupid. Nothing but stupid. Huh. I've been on the committee to get those letters signed. Maybe you signed one. I had a bunch of letters to the government asking them to reconsider that we needed a game warden here. It was an important area for a game warden. No, I didn't. You never did get one of those letters. No. We sent away 2,250 of them from here. That was a lot of people that were yeah. protesting that. Yeah. No, I haven't. Uh I used to run to the Fish and Game Club here years ago. And I went to a meeting once in Netta, far up from Victoria. And boy, there's lots of game and lots of plenty of food and everything. I was always enough food, but uh, there weren't so many deer. And he got talking, and I said, yeah, I said, that's all very good. And the time your kids get old enough to know what it is, I said, they'll have to go to the zoo to see a deer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's where the elephants are going to be pretty soon, too, they say. Yeah. You know, they're just getting crowded out. There's no room for them anymore. Yeah. Do you know the Kennedy Lake area? Did you ever? No. Well, there's a lot of elk up there now. Yeah. That was something you guys did. Fish and Game Club brought in the elk. Mm -hmm. They never were in here before. They were playing. Yes, they were uh, here before. They were? Oh. Yeah. Did you see them out at your ranch? Or no. Was? But uh, there was one winter. Oh, good one. Here it was. Anyway, the old timers tell me about old Indians that were old then. Uh huh. And. Uh, they knew about it, huh? Yeah. And uh, they said that there was no uh, no summer at all that year. Just winter? Winter, right. To winter? Yeah. Yeah? And that killed them? It killed them, yes. Mm. Do you recall, Henry, if there were ever salmon or steelheads in our river here? No. You don't remember, huh? No. Yeah. Well, they can't come over the uh, falls. Um, Grand uh, Coulee. Yeah. Yeah. Well, did you know, though, that the river that comes up here goes into the Columbia below the falls? Is it? Yeah. Meaning they can come up the Okanagan River. You come up the Okanagan, and then the Smilkmeen joins the Okanagan Sea. Yeah. And theoretically, they could come up here, but there's a dam down by Nighthawk. And that dam stops them. 
And our fish and game club now is trying to get that changed too. We're trying to get that dam out of there because mm -hmm. there's no need for it. The farmers down in uh, Washington there are using wells and using the Okanagan River. Yeah. They don't need those long, uh, what do you call them, where they went high up on the river and they started a shoot? Irrigation canals? Irrigation, yeah. they, didn't, they don't need those anymore. They've got pumps. Mm -hmm. and they can pump the water out of the rivers and they don't need mm -hmm. to do that. Did you ever go salmon fishing? You ever no. chase salmon? No? No. no? I, uh, I've heard of the normal fact that every once in a while there was good trout fishing at a certain place. And so there's four of us got together and we took the time to go up. We can't do the night. It wouldn't bite you. The uh, salmon, the, the, the big Kamloops trout, the big rainbow trout, drew them together. Mm -hmm. And then they were all milling around in the stream somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then how'd you get them out? Diving after them and throw them out. Like seals, huh? Yeah. Chasing them there. Just grab them with your hands. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. What lake was that or what, where was that? Davis Lake. Davis Lake. Oh, yeah, I know that lake. Boss Davis, that that series there, yeah, yeah. What was the best fishing lake around here when when you were a kid? Was I guess Thin Lake was the best. Thin, yeah, yeah. Thin and Friend Lake and then Bonner Lake. They right in that string there. Yeah, yeah. they were good. Yeah. Were there squawfish in there in those days too? Oh, I guess. Yeah, those darn squawfish. <laughs> but there's another little fish that was only about that long. And uh, I don't know what they call them, but they brought up the spawning and eat the eggs. Of the trout? Trout or anything. Yeah. Shiners? They weren't shiners, were they? No. Dace? I didn't know what were. Yeah. Huh. There were, what was the limit when you were fishing then? Did you have a limit? No. Just as many as you wanted, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Now, one time, it was the fall of the year, and uh, the whitefish were running, but they wouldn't take a bite. Mm -hmm. So, old Mrs. Rabbit found out about it, and she came up. And she said, I'll get you some fish. So she goes and ties all six, seven hooks on the line and throws it in. And as they come along, she'd flip them out. Mm -hmm. And she got her fish for you. Oh, huh? she got the fish. Yeah, she loved to fish. Yeah. Nora, Nora was her daughter, you know. Nora is her daughter. Yeah. And so she says that she'd go out with her mom. And her mom would just fish, 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 fish. Till yeah. it was dark. Yeah. And, and the kids spent all their time picking up fish and baiting hooks. <laughs> and she was just uh, reefing them out. Yeah. She loved to fish. Yeah. Did you know the rabbit family pretty well? Oh, well, yes. I'm in school. But not everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever go to one of Nora's uh, mom's... What was Mrs. Rabbit's name? What was Grandma Rabbit's name? I think the husband. Lauren Zedro. Huh? Lauren Zedro. Lauren Zedro? Lauren Zedro. She, she used to have a beaver feed. Uh, she'd cook two small beavers and invite people to come and eat them? Oh, that would be Mrs. Bromley. Mrs. Bromley did that? Yeah. Oh. She was a sister of Mrs. Rabbit's. Mm hmm. And they cooked beaver, and everybody came and just loved it. It was good eating, they said. Did you get in on one of those? We had, we used to catch the, get the odd beer in them. Bacon, uh -huh. but uh, to get the best out of it is take it and put it in soda water and start it to boil, just to boil. As soon as it comes to boil, take it off and put it in the oven. Mm -hmm. That soda water treatment helps, huh? Yeah. Get some of the grease out. 
Well, yes, I guess it does. Because yeah. bear meat is all the fat. Uh -huh. And beaver, too. Yeah. Beaver's fat, too, yeah. The other night we went out and we were having a, well, it'd be Nora's grandson, Leslie. Uh, Nora's daughter was Trudy. Yeah. And Trudy and John Perlin had two sons, Ernie and Leslie. Now, Leslie has a son named David, and we were out for David's birthday party, and they had a meal of game, wild game, birthday party, and we had grouse and duck and wild goose, and we had a fourth meat. We didn't know what it was till we got all through. Guess what it was? Lynx. Lynx. Yeah, and it was good eating. That was good meat. Lynx is good meat. Yeah. Makes my mouth water right now to think about it. It was so good. Well, you've heard of groundhogs, haven't you? Sure, yeah. They're good eating. Are they good eating, too? Yeah. 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 I know I, uh, I've i got a, a sort of a small rifle. It's a two twenty two. they call it. It's a fairly flat shooting, fast rifle. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was using that, and I was getting groundhogs, you know. Grounds. Marmots. Yeah. I was getting marmots. They looked pretty good to me, so I thought, well, I'll bring them home the hindquarters. So I gathered up about six or eight of them, and I smoked them in my smoker. Gee, they were good. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of meat we waste. Oh, we, yes. That we could be eating. Yeah. Over in Europe, they wouldn't, or nor would they in Asia. All that stuff would be eaten. Yeah. Well, it goes back to Mrs. Bromley. She had a party at her place, and, and all the... Mum and the big shots, wives come and supper there. And boy, they just filled themselves full. And uh, then the Mrs. Bumley says, You know, I can't meet you eating. You know, bear meat. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Bumley says, Yeah, I went for the door and he doubled me up. <laughs> Yet they were going back for seconds and thirds. They were enjoying it. Yeah. She should have waited a couple days. <laughs> Not told them right away, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of all the wild game I've eaten, I like elk the best. I do too. Elk is the finest. Yeah. They say that one other is better, and that's uh, mountain sheep. But I've never had a chance to eat any mountain sheep. Oh, they're good. Mountain sheep? Yeah. yeah. The bear I ate, uh, I had one roast of bear, and that was from a, a little bear that had been raiding apple orchards. And the apples, you see, made it real oh, good. Oh, yeah. Good. Oh, was it good. That's pretty close to being one of my favorite meals I ever ate. <laughs> it was real juicy, you know. Yes. The bear is juicy, like a deer is dry, but yeah. a bear is nice and juicy. Oh, that was good heat. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. Did your wife know how to cook wild animals pretty good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, too, you know, because oh, some yeah. people can ruin them. You know, yeah. They don't know how to cook them, yeah. No, she was... Pretty good cook. Well, I'll tell you, in the country, you made uses of everything. And you made it as good as you knew how. And those ladies traded recipes, too, huh? Oh, God, yes. They, they would talk recipes when they got together. Yeah. Did your wife make soap, too? Did she know how to make... Uh, Homemade soap, or did she have to do that? No, she didn't have to make soap. So, but uh, a neighbor woman, she used to make her own soap. Who did? A neighbor woman, Mrs. Yeah. Thin. Mrs. Thin, yeah. Yeah, she made her own soap. Did you ever watch her do it? Yeah, but I was just in case she read. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't interested at all. Yeah. My grandmother made some of that stuff too, you know. But the only trouble was it was so strong it took the outer layer of your skin off. 
<laughs> it took the dirt, but it took the skin too. Yeah. Well, that's about that. I got the same drug time. I was just a kid yet. Maybe 12 or 14. And Jack then had a young fellow out from England learning him to ranch. And uh, he came uh, he came from the house to the barn. I was, Jim and I were going from the barn back to the house. And the chicken house was right close by there. There's a skunk. <laughs> yeah. So, this is an Englishman. I was a beautiful animal. It was what? A beautiful animal. Oh, yeah, okay. And uh, <laughs> so he said, Go get him. He went into the chicken coop. Go get him. We locked the door. <laughs> oh, what a dirty trick. Was he crying for help after a while? <laughs> he got out somehow. A beautiful animal. <laughs> I got a joke for you, okay? What's black and white with red spots? It's an animal, okay? What animal is black and white with red spots? Give up? Yeah. It's a zebra with uh, zebra. measles. <laughs> <laughs> Another guy told me one, he said, what's black and white with a red rash? And he said, and... Uh, I gave up, and the guy says it's a skunk, a baby skunk with diaper rash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, skunks can, can be a lot of nuisance. Did they ever get in your chicken coop and steal eggs? No, we had dogs that kept them out. Oh, yeah. What did you do when a dog got sprayed? <laughs> well, you couldn't do anything. I mean, they took care of themselves. Oh, what they do? They're going to stick their head in the water. Yeah? They do? Yeah. Come up for air once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> do they roll in the mud, too? I didn't see them rolling in the mud, but I guess they did. Mm. You know what the modern way to, to do that for a dog is? No. You get two big cans of uh, V8 tomato juice. And you put them all. You you put this tomato juice all over them. You just wash them in tomato juice, and it neutralizes the poison, the spray. I never would have thought of that. Would you? No. Tomato juice? No. But it works. Yeah. My sisters had to do it a few times for their dog Molly. She never learns. <laughs> she sees those little pretty animals, and she chases after them too. Yeah. Well, I had two dogs who were on the ranch, and uh, one of them, well, he was only about a year old, I guess. I took him out on the bed, we were just more or less two hours old, to hunt the hill time, and I shot a bear. He was rolled down the hill a little way, and I seen he was done for him. I went down and I to him and I shook him and he said, come on, I said, come on, get, get him, dog, get him, sport. I said, thought he came down that yellow blind and he teared in the tore into that bear. And ever after that, if there was a bear around, he was there. Mm-hmm. He'd chase it. Yeah. Well, that's good, keep him away from here. Is that what was in your mind, too, to get him so that he would chase the bears away? Or? Well, no. It, it just worked out that way. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's bad about hunting with a dog after bears? The dog goes out and he and he meets the bear and then he gets frightened and he comes right back for you <laughs> with the bear right on his tail. <laughs> and he hides behind you and lets you deal with the bear. <laughs> that can be bad if you're just hiking around without a rifle. Yeah. But if you got a rifle you're okay. Well, another fellow and I were hanging, and uh, the yelling bear 
ಸ್ವಾಸ್ತಿ ನೋಡಿ ಕೊರೋನಾ ಹೇಳಿ ಅಜ್ಜಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವೈಟ್ ನೇರ ಕರಡಿ ಡಾನ್ ದ ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ವಿಟ್ ಗೆಟ್ ದ ಬೇಬ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಫೋರ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಯು ಆರ್ ಮೋರ್ ಬ್ರೇವ್ ದನ್ ಸ್ಮಾರ್ಟ್ ಹಾ Well, I can hear the crows coming back, Henry. Yes. That's good a good sound. That means we're going to have something for a while. They're a smart bird. Crows are a very yeah. intelligent bird. So are ravens. Yeah. They're both smart birds. Well, there's much much different between crows and ravens. Well, one lives a heck of a lot longer. Ravens yeah. live up to 50-60 years. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. I think I used to have pet crows when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. I uh, shot the mother, you know. and i could hear the little ones up in the nest so i crawled up there and i got them they're an interesting little pet crows are, are a nice little pet yeah and they're smart as can be yeah i guess so yeah did you ever have a wild pet of any kind an animal you found in the woods no some people like to try raccoons you know but i guess they're the devil when they get big they'll chew you up just as soon as look at you well when they're small they're so cute mm-hmm. ba- baby raccoons that people try to keep them but... well changing the subject a little bit when we left off the last time we get to uh, the severe winter of 1902 1903 didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, we were talking a little bit about weather, yeah. Yeah. I don't remember it. <laughs> I was born in 1937. 37. Yeah, right. and you were born in 1907. Yeah. 1897. So you can remember? Oh, yeah. 1904. Yeah. What was the winter like? Well, there's the winter of 19, winter of 1901, 1902, which is like last winter here. Real so, nice, huh? So they should tell me. I don't remember that one. But the next winter, I went to work in Hedley, and he was starting up. And uh, he went down and he said, as soon as I get a place that is ready, he says, I'll send down for you. Send up for you. So... Uh, We, uh, mother and I were alone there, when they was come down, she said, come on, get yourself ready, we're going to Granite for two dance. So we got ready and went down. And it was so four hours of this, three, four hours to go to the 12 miles to, to the dance. And it snowed all night. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Next morning we struck out for home. We lived 12 miles from Grand and it took us a full day to make them 12 miles. And they stayed overnight. They are patient. It took four hours to make, uh, took them all day to make the next four miles. Who was that? The Thins. The Thins, yeah. 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 <laughs> wow. That's the winter, all the buildings were in the cave again. The snow just piled up on the roofs, huh? Had to shovel your roofs off, huh? Yeah. Yeah. But it come down so fast that you... You shovel it off, you look to see where it is getting <laughs> shoveled. You could hardly see. Yeah. Yeah. What happened to the animals that winter? There must have been uh, death to those animals trying to... The, Lucky thing that happened to hay that time. Yeah. I mean the wild animals. Oh. Oh, I don't know. They must have had it quite a time. Mm-hmm. All except for the bears. <laughs> yeah. The bears are smart. <laughs> yeah, I know about it. He went out bear hunting. And uh, there's no rotten log laying there. He sticks his head in the other. in the log, here's Mr. Bear in there looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it there in a hurry. Yeah, yeah. 
I heard of guys trying to smoke them out, you know, when they're they're hibernating and they find them. Yeah. I guess you can smell them. I never did find one like that. There's a little vapor coming up, you know, a little heat. Yeah. And you can smell in that vapor, bear. Yeah. Well, these guys would try to smoke them out, you know, shove a, a stick down there with some something burning on the end of it. That's bad news. <laughs> <laughs> The old bear comes bursting out of there pretty angry. <laughs> and I know that I had uh, shot three grizzlies. The, the old mother and the uh, cub mm -hmm. and the uh, yearling. All together. At one time. That was a waste, huh? What could he do with all those bears? Well, he could hide it. He wanted all the hides, huh? Yeah. You remember his name by any chance? Yeah, Roland Manning. Manning? Oh. Roland? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, did you know a guy by the name of Art Venevold? Venevold? Venevold. Venevold. Art, Art Venevold. His, heard of the name. Yeah, he used to live out at Manning Siding there. He was a, a section man for the CPR. Oh. Art Venevold. He came from Norway. No, I didn't know him. Mm -hmm. He came here after we moved out. He must have, yeah. In the 30s, I think he came here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, how long were you on the farm out there? What, what years did you stay there? You were born there, right? Yeah. So that's from 97, 1897. 43. To 43. Oh. Yeah, but sometimes your dad left to go to work other places. Yeah. Yeah. That's the story everywhere, isn't it? You're, yeah. you're, you're supporting your ranch. The yeah. ranch doesn't support you. No. You have to go get a job somewhere yeah. to support the ranch. Well, there was one fellow, Jack then. He was well off. He was a remittance man. Oh, English. Yeah. 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 And uh, he, he had one of a place, but he blew it all in. He left the whole works. How'd he do that? Gambling. Oh. And he'd go on to a hotel and say, how much liquor have you got in here? Yeah. Write him out a check for it. The whole works. Yeah. And buy it for everybody in the place. Yeah. That Thin Mountain, that's named after him, isn't yeah. it? Thin Mountain. Yeah. Well, that was the prime ranch land that he had, right? Well... Uh, that was pretty good ranch land. Good ranch, yes. Yeah. But Myron's was better. Whose? Myron's. Myron's? Yeah. I don't know who's on that place now. There's a guy by the name of Scott out there. And there's... Uh, yeah, Scott. Pretty well owns from Prem Lake, you know, down the valley there to Otter Lake, north. Pretty well owns that whole valley. Uh, Scott. Uh, I don't Scott. Scott. Is, I don't know if he's Scott. Is his last name Scott? There's a guy that lives on the hillside named Mannion. Mannion there. No, Mannion lives under the flats. I just the foot of Manning Lake, a friend lake. Mm -hmm. And uh, Scott was about a mile and a half North. down the road. North? South. South? Oh. Yeah. And your ranch was up in the hills a little more, wasn't it? Well, it, uh, the valley was just, just roughly a half a mile wide. And it took a, a mile of it. Oh, you had a mile of it? Yeah. Right around the lake? Well, no, we should have gone better than one lake and out of the next lake. Oh. From Frem Lake to Thin Lake? No, from Manning. To Frem Lake, yes, to uh, Otter? Otter. Otter Lake, yeah. yeah. Okay, now I got it pictured. Yeah. I took some pictures of some old log buildings up there. Probably were yours. 
I've got some photos I took of some old log buildings in there. Yeah. Over there. Yeah. Well, I, I built a barn, but uh, I put it as the place to let it do haywire. Didn't keep the roof up, huh? No. Yeah. And uh, heavy snow and slid off one side, and the other side would push it over. You built it of logs? Lumber. Lumber, oh. That's something I like to do, is take pictures of old log buildings. There are some beautiful ones in this area here. Mm -hmm. Do you know up there on uh, Darcy Mountain? Yeah. There used to be a deer camp up there. Mm -hmm. And the people would shoot deer and then they'd ship them out on the train, you know, to, to Vancouver and sell them. It was legal to do that. Come then. in. Henry, I got to here. Hello again. How are you, John? Oh, we're fine. No any good jokes at tape recorders, Ryan? No any good jokes. <laughs> did you enjoy seeing the uh, Skarmorowskis? Yes, very yeah. much. Well, I came fine. Yes, it is, sir. You better drink it. She won't leave until you do. That's right. Is it bad tasting? No, it's just kind of mm. Did you bring this up? Picture from Henry. My cousin. Eh? My cousin. Oh, That's the farm out there. Uh, you know where the old uh, the old um, Merritt Highway went around there, hooked in behind. Mm -hmm. it? You know where Esco lives now on the corner. Yeah. There? Okay, on the far end of that, near Jack Muncie's. Yeah. There's a little schoolhouse, an old schoolhouse. That's it. Mm -hmm. Bye, George. That's such a realistic thing. The trees are bigger. Mm -hmm. the, but boy, it's still you know the same shape that little mm -hmm. L-shaped building. There's the outhouse in the back there. Isn't that nice? Yeah. There. You don't have to drink all that if you want to. Yeah. He'll water his petunias with it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's that for? Is that to keep you young? Yeah. Well, here's the guys. Put your hair brown again. Mm -hmm. You said that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Where did your mother come from? Where where was her home grown? St. Paul, Minnesota. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Then she came out to Montana and then she came up to BC. Was she Scandinavian? German. German. Do you know where I grew up? Grew up? Where? Duluth, Minnesota. Duluth. That's 150 miles from St. Paul. Yeah. That's something. It, that's the second person I met around here. Old pioneer that was from the uh, States, from Minnesota. Oh, well, I guess I won't remember who it was. Somebody was telling me their wife came out of that area, too. Yeah, my father was John. Mm -hmm. He came straight from the old country, huh? Yeah. And she came up through Montana and up here to BC from St. Paul. Yeah. yeah. So she was born in St. Paul. Yeah. Yeah, I was there last summer. I was in St. Paul. Was you? Mm hmm. Yeah, my favorite United place now. Oh, gee. It's called the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, mm -hmm. St. Paul. Mm -hmm. There's over two million people in those two cities. Mm -hmm. Minneapolis, I think, is about a hundred or one million two hundred thousand. St. Paul's about six hundred or seven hundred thousand. St. Paul's the smaller community of the two, but it's the capital. Mm -hmm. St. Paul is the capital. I was down in the Mississippi River, right yeah. in the middle of the town there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, mother had some pictures, I guess they're still around, of uh, the family gathering on the edge of the river. Mm -hmm. 
Hennepin Falls. Was there a waterfall there? No, not right there. No? There's a famous Hennepin Falls there. That's where the granaries, you know, uh, put their uh, water wheels and they ground gr uh, flour there. Mm -hmm. Gold metal flour, Pillsbury flour. Those two uh, famous brands of flour that they, they ground down there, yeah. Did she ever talk to you about St. Paul when you were a kid? Oh, yes. She had fond memories of it? Yeah. What was her maiden name? Coffers. 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 C-O-F-F-E-R-S. E-R-S. Just the way it sounds, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they were great farmers down there, the Germans. The Scandinavians were just sort of so-so. <laughs> they were loggers. They liked the woods. The Swedes, the Finns, and the, yeah. and the Norwegians liked to log. And then in the north there, the, the uh, Ukrainians and the Slavs, they used to do the mining. They mm -hmm. were good at mining. Uh, Italians, too. The Italians mm -hmm. liked mine. But the Scandinavians, they liked be up in the air, <laughs> like yeah. the, uh, uh, not un underground. They, and then they they fished the Great Lakes too. Yeah. Good for fishing there too. Yeah. They caught a lot of lake trout and herring. Mm -hmm. Herring was a good fish. Darn it! We keep talking about food. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to get and and do my uh, cooking, I guess. You betcha. Yeah, my son and I, right. I've got a, a son at home. Carl and I, he peels the spuds and I cook the meal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I was going to tell you about the uh, old timers here, Jack Finn. He was a uh, remittance man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, an old Norwegian, old Myron. Myron was a Norwegian, huh? Yeah. yeah. And uh, now they've had an old Scotchman, uh, Neil Brundrick. Uh huh. Alex McFarland.